It's a very familiar passage for many of us, but I pray that what follows, you might see it in a new light. For a few moments, I want to take you back in time and revisit the scene. And I'd like to introduce you to somebody. He's a fictional character, but what follows is based on all four gospel accounts of that epic journey. Good morning, everybody. My name is Zeke, short for Ezekiel. I live in the little village of Bethany, which is on the eastern slopes of the Mount of Olives. Jerusalem lies to the west of us, about an hour's walk away, on the other side of the mountain. I live on the outskirts of the village, and we have some great neighbours next door. There's a man called Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary. Sadly, a great tragedy struck that family a few months ago, because Lazarus died. Naturally enough, my wife and I were the first on the scene to go and sit with Martha and Mary and to comfort them. It was very sad and very worrying, because who was going to look after them? Lazarus was the breadwinner. And something extraordinary happened. Their friend Jesus, you know, the rabbi, the teacher from Galilee, he came to visit, and I remember it very clearly. It was the fourth day after Lazarus died. But instead of sitting with the women and crying with them, he went straight to the tomb. He told the men to roll back the stone that blocked the entrance. And in a loud voice, he cried out, Lazarus, come out! And he did. I tell you, the hairs on the back of my neck still stand up when I remember that incredible scene. I heard that Jesus was a wonderful teacher, that he performed many miracles. But surely this was the greatest. And I saw it with my own eyes. As I said, that happened a few months ago, but yesterday Jesus and his followers came to stay next door once again. In the meantime, in the evening, I could picture Lazarus at the head of the table, the two sisters working their socks off. They'd have been very busy. And after the meal, they sat and talked for hours. We didn't know what they were talking about, but we could hear them from next door. And then today we woke up, looked out of the window, it was going to be a very, very lovely sunny day. The sun was already above the horizon, and so were the crowd next door. They seemed to be getting ready to go out, and there was a lot of excitement. What's going on? we asked. Oh, we're going up to Jerusalem, why don't you come with us? Well, my wife and I had nothing planned for the day, and the Passover celebration, preparations, that will be a few days away, so we said, well, why not? Now, I have to tell you that Elizabeth, my wife, never misses an opportunity to go to the city and shop. They have a much better selection of food and fabric than we do have here in Bethany. It wasn't long before all the villagers heard about Jesus' visit and his trip to Jerusalem. It's funny, really, everybody seemed to want to join in. So by the time we got everything ready, you know, get the kids ready and so on, and how long does that take, it was quite a party atmosphere. Everybody there knew Jesus. And after what he'd done in raising Lazarus from the dead, they recognised him as somebody very, very special. And there always seemed to be something going on when he was around. I tell you, some of us even began to wonder if he was the Messiah. You know, the anointed one, the king the scriptures told us about. Well, when we set out, the sun was still low in the sky and we climbed towards the top of the Mount of Olives. Jesus was walking in the middle of the crowd and he seemed to be enjoying the party atmosphere. Then I noticed a couple of disciples coming towards us. They must have been sent ahead by Jesus to the little hamlet of Bethphage at the top of the mountain. And they were leading two donkeys, a mother and her colt. I wondered why. Surely Jesus wasn't tired. He'd only been walking for half an hour. And then something unusual happened. Jesus approached the young donkey, not its mother. One of the men, perhaps he was the owner of the donkeys. No, 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 Rabbi, he called. No one has ridden the colt before. Ride on the other one. But Jesus calmly mounted the young animal and it stood there completely still. 
Now we all know how long it takes to break in a young donkey and it often involves us spending a lot of time on the ground having been bucked off the animal's back. But no, there was no sign of distress. Another little miracle actually. And quietly it began to walk forwards. As we were going through the village we got our first sight of Jerusalem and our eyes were drawn to the temple. We could see the sunlight reflecting off the golden decorations. It was a sight to take your breath away. And even though I'd seen it hundreds of times before, I've never seen it look so magnificent. And suddenly the crowd began to sing and shout, Hosanna! Hooray! And we began to praise God for all the miracles that Jesus had done. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord! And people picked up palm branches, began to wave them about, a bit like we would if the Queen was coming to visit Frinton. Just like Jesus was being recognised as the King. And I found myself yelling at the top of my voice too. I suddenly realised deep down that I knew he was the Messiah. No one but the Messiah could do what he'd been doing. Blessed is the King of Israel! And a great sound went up for the crowd, and my heart was almost bursting. I felt as though I was part of something very special. We began to go down the steep slope, and we could see the Golden Gate, one of the three main gates into the city. The sun was high enough now to shine directly onto them, and what a sight! And very unusual for that time of day, a large crowd was streaming out towards us. Normally, everybody would just be making their way into the city. I wondered, were they coming to meet Jesus? We zigzagged our way down the olive groves, and at time the slope was very, very slippery and steep. And we laid down palm branches, even our cloaks on the ground, to make sure the donkey didn't stumble. She was carrying a very important person. The crowd coming out of Jerusalem met us halfway up the hill, they were coming to meet, greet Jesus, because as soon as they saw him, they shouted out, Hosanna! Hooray! They turned around and began to lead the procession back. And there we were, all shouting, singing, waving our palm branches, and we made our way to the great golden gate. The crowds lining the dusty road, they were waving and cheering, loads of people peering over the, the city walls, they were doing the same. It was a wonderful, wonderful occasion. Hosanna to the son of David! The cries were echoing off the walls. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest! But there were some, though, who didn't know Jesus. And they were asking, who is this? Who is that riding on the donkey? And the people around them told them, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. But of course we all know that he was far, far more than that. He was indeed the Messiah that the people thought he was. But they were expecting a warrior king, not the suffering servant that we read about in Isaiah 53. Let me read you just a few couple of verses. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Amazing words which would come to fruition on the Friday of that week. We, we call it Good Friday. Good Friday? The day that Jesus sacrificed himself on our behalf? Yes, it is good. It's the good news, the gospel, that Jesus died to make it possible for us who believe in him to have eternal life. So as we enter this holy week, let us prepare ourselves for that sombre day but the day when he paid the price. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and we look forward to celebrating with you the resurrection on Easter Sunday. God bless you all. Amen.